Hello everybody. Meet again with me in English for Nursing 2 class for A16 1 and 2. So, today's topic is research abstract. And we will discuss about the mystery of research abstract. Have you ever known about research abstract? Or maybe have you ever read the research abstract? Of course, I believe you have. Because, yeah, I believe that you have already known and you have already been familiar with some research articles. In every research article, there is usually an abstract. And today, we will learn how to write down the abstract itself. First, we have to know what is an abstract. An abstract is a short summary containing major work, which is usually written in one paragraph. So you only need a paragraph to describe your own abstract. Maybe you have ever asked, why should we write an abstract? The aim of the abstract is to lead the readers to understand our work in the past, especially our research. And this is about the location, where should we put an abstract? An abstract should be put on the top after the article and author's identity. We usually find an article that on the very top of the article, there is uh, the journal identity, for example, Journal of Emergency Nursing, or maybe Air Medical Journal, or something like that, and then followed by the author's name, for example, uh, Mark, and Lee and yeah and whatever whatever they name after that we may find the abstract so the abstract should be put on the top of the article after the article and also author's identity okay I believe that all of you have already um, read the abstract itself but how could we write down an abstract? The first principle is the abstract should be focused on the research that we have conducted, not the paper we have written. Can you distinguish between them? You know, in the abstract, you will tell how did you conduct your research in the past, so you have to tell the readers whatever you have done during the re you, during your research. I mean, there are two kind of sentences that we, uh, I mean, two kinds of tenses that we can use in writing down an abstract. The first one is past tense, which is usually used to describe the research process, and the second one is present tense that can be used in describing the recent phenomena. Usually, it's written in the background section. And the third one, we have to use third person's perspective. For example, use word researcher instead of I, we, or something like that. After that, we have to write it down for maximum 300 words long. And don't forget to make it single spaced. Okay, so an abstract should be maximum 300 words and it should be single spaced. Okay, the anatomy of abstract. The first one is introduction followed by purpose and a method results conclusion 
But beware, those terms may be very best on articles or guidelines. So whenever you want to submit an article, make sure you have right the other guideline carefully. Yeah, this is the example of an abstract. This is a research abstract for the international conference proceeding. Well, as we can see, this is the background section or introduction section. We can take a look here what kind of tenses being used in this section. Okay, let us take a look at the first sentence. People enjoy being airplane passengers since they give important benefit time efficiency. People enjoy. This is the verb one. It means that in the background section, it used the present tense. Okay. The second one is the aim. The aim is similar to the purpose. If you're writing down a pilot article, you may use the present tense here. But if you are writing down your, the research article, which the research has been conducted in the past time, you have to use past tense. So the aim of the study was to, for example, to analyze the relationship between A and B and so on. And let us move to the methods. In the method section, we have to use past tense because this is the method of our research that has been conducted in the past time. For the results section, we may use past and present tense based on the data that happened. If it is related to your research process, it should be written in past tense, while if um, the data is about the recent phenomena, you may use present tense. Okay, for example, the chosen articles described that hypoxia occurred during flight has correlation with changes in human respiratory system as a physiological response of high altitude. The chosen articles described because I choose the articles in the past. So I use past tense. Okay. And we move to the conclusions section. Uh, in this section, we use present tense. Decreasing oxygen saturation in blood occurs in that condition which is consequently establishing discomfort. This is present tense. Huh. We can take a look at this, the keywords. It usually attached after the abstract, but this is not the part of the abstract. Okay, if previously we talked about um, the abstract in the international conference proceeding, uh, this time we will take a look at the abstract of the journal article. This is usually my own article. Let us see in the abstract section. Yeah, it is written in a full, uh, what is it, full narrative paragraph. So there is no section written such as uh, the background, something like that, something like that. It is integrated in one paragraph. The first red line is the introduction, which stated uh, by the sentence, flight attendants have a responsibility to manage some emergency cases on board, include in-flight medical emergency. Oh my god. The second line 
the second line is the purpose of the study I was conducted as we can see kind of tenses that I used is past tense because this study was conducted in the past tense well the sentence is this study was conducted to explore the barrier blah 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 the third line is the method of the research as we can see it is written this study was a hermeneutic or interpretative phenomenological studies blah 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 blah, blah. it used past tense the fourth red line is the result shows that flight attendance blah 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 this is the result of the research and it is written in the present tense as we can see shows it is the verb one and the last red line is the conclusion the conclusion is written in the present tense as we can see having limitations in equipments and personnel make them unable to perform that that refers to emergency medical management both the result and also the conclusions are uh, still happening now so in this way we have to write it down in present tense and this is the same there is keywords written under the abstract the keywords enable the reader uh, to get the access to your own article uh, while they were assessing the search engine such as Google, Yahoo, and something like that. So the phrase is you have to write it down in the keywords should match your uh, what is it your main topic or your main idea of your research. Okay, I have some tips that you can do in writing down a research abstract. The first one if, is you have to read some research articles, as many as possible. This thing enables you to get so many information about research abstracts so you can be familiar with uh, the form maybe or, maybe, uh, or to the uh, writing style or something like that of the abstract. The second one is you have to reread your work so you can find the importance. Remember, this is an abstract, not a summary. So you have to write some important information in your abstract. And you have to make sure it on your own because that's your research. The third one is read the order guideline. Okay, you have to pay attention to this one because it doesn't matter how good your writing is or how great your research was but if you don't follow the order guideline i guarantee that you will not be accepted in the journal or maybe in the proceeding so you have to obey the order guideline the fourth is avoid direct translating. If you're working in Bahasa Indonesia, you have to rebuild your sentence or your style of writing. Because Bahasa Indonesia and English is pretty different in writing style. You have to be careful. Do not just translate it from Indonesia to English. The fifth is avoid any self-perception. Remember, you are writing down an abstract as an introduction to the readers about your work. So you have to write anything there based on your work, based on your research, not by your own self-opinion. The sixth is you have to make sure the abstract is coherent with the full text. Okay, so you have to make sure the abstract is really 
in align with your whole text. That's why I ask you to reread your work. And the last one, but not least, you have to ask your peer or supervisor to review it. In this way, you may avoid some subjectivity related to your own work. And you may get some excellent feedbacks from uh, both your peer and also your supervisor so that you have, uh, what is it, you have some new perspective and yeah, I believe that you can write a good quality of research abstract. Okay. So that's all the brief information about this abstract and you may take a look on your own. You may explore uh, anything that you can find related to the research abstract and we may discuss it later to, through the video conference. Maybe uh, from the big blue button in colon 2 or maybe we can uh, have the conference via Microsoft Teams or Zoom or something like that. Uh, we may have the further discussion there if you think it's needed. And I hope you can write a good quality research abstract because yeah, you're writing it down not only as the English furnishing assignment too, but also uh, for your own research articles of your undergraduate thesis. So everybody, good luck for writing your abstract. Uh, I'm looking forward to read your work. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming with me to learn about research abstract. I wish you and have a nice day and goodbye everyone. Bye.